and we're here at the ID Tech X show. And hi. Hi, how you hi. doing? So who are you? Uh, my name is Ahmed Busnena. I'm the CTO of Nano Ops Inc., which is a new company that spun out of Northeastern University in Boston. And uh, uh, what are you doing at we, the company? We do printed electronics at the micro and nano scale. And is this what you're doing right yes. here? Yes. So, so for example, this is a, uh, a three, la three layers printed, uh, silver and silicon oxide. And these three layers have a minimum resolution of two micron. And each layer takes one minute to print over the whole wafer. So this technology is very unique. And there's no other company that, uh, or industry that uses it now. Uh, and uh, it allows you to print very fast and you can go down to 20 nanometers in scale, for example. So one minute? One minute, to, yes. To print what, the whole, the whole wafer? Thing, the whole thing, yes. Yeah. Uh, and you can do it on plastic. This is uh, PETG, for example, silver on PETG. And, uh, uh, and you can do it on silicon, you can do it on glass, you can do it on uh, sapphire, you can do it on a variety of substrates. So what do we see here? What is this? This is a pattern, circuit pattern from a customer. Okay, this one, for example, let me go back to this one. This one has about, uh, this particular one has 17,000 transistors, for example, arranged in three different areas, four different areas. And, uh, and these transistors uh, are micro transistors. So these are, have minimum feature size of about uh, two micron. The, uh, uh, we can go down, like I said, to 20 to 25 nanometers is minimum feature size. Uh, so this technology has been developed over 10 years by funding from the National Science Foundation and uh, Department of Defense. And uh, it took about $80 million to develop. Uh, the university came out of Northeastern University. The company licensed about 35 patents that are international and U.S. patents and that, that actually uh, describe the technology and protects the technology. Um, so is this a unique way of uh, doing uh, like chips or yes. semiconductors chips, or what is yes. this? Exactly, chips. So we can do chips for communications or for memory or for other things. So for example, this machine, uh, uh, this it's a fab in one machine, for example. So you can print, uh, you can put your, your wafers, you can put your ink, push a button and the robot and the machine does everything. So this is a picture of the machine that exists in uh, Boston. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a fully automated, uh, software-driven uh, technology that can do a variety of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, patterns, for example. Can do, you can print memory, you can print RF devices. So this is the machine? It's uh, just one line? Yes, this is, this is uh, the Gen 1, the first generation that was built in 2014. And what's happening here? This is a robot, central robot. Uh, this is the uh, this is the this is using a template. So there's a template that looks like this, for example, and and uh, and the template uh, is taken from here. Uh, and this is the substrate. This one is designed for flexible electronics. And then uh, the assembly happens here. The transfer happens here, and the alignment between printed layers happens here. And, and this is where the operator is. Okay. And Gen 2, is that already all set up yes, or is yes, coming was, in the future? Yes, was uh, built in 2018, last year. And so that one, uh, we needed more stations. So this is hex hexagon, so it has only six. So we needed more. So we built the linear one. So the robot is linear, goes back and forth. And this is the machine now. This is the new machine, this one here. And you can see how big it is. So this one has about eight stations. And so we're only using four at this point, but it has uh, options for adding annealing, for adding inspection, for adding a lot of different uh, options, for example. And, uh, and this one is, uh, is going to be, this one is used for plastic printing on flexible uh, electronics on plastics. But also we're building a new version, very similar to this one, that prints on silicon, glass, or other types of substrate, sapphire, uh, ceramic, any, any flat substrate, you can print electronics on it. And is this Gen 3 coming in the future? Gen 3, yeah. This is Gen 3. This is different, different technology, which is, uh, can, can print uh, very, very fast. All these technologies can print in one minute, for example. 
the whole uh, wafer in one minute. So when you talk about 10 to 100 times cheaper, yes. then what? Then, then semiconductor fabrication, then Intel, then, then, then uh, Micron, then Samsung, for example. So those guys have, their fabs are cost 20 billion each. And How costs, many billion for yours? Oh, uh, it's just millions. So, yeah. uh, order of magnitude? 100. Uh, two orders of magnitude. Two orders of those magnitude. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, more affordable? Cheaper, yes. Cheaper. Less. less no yeah. silicon? We can do silicon, but we're not focusing on silicon because actually there's a lot of market for, three G, for 5G and for RF applications, communications. It's a bigger market than silicon. So, how compli complex can the chips be? Can be very, as complex as the chips you have in your phone or your laptop. You can do ARM Cortex A, huge. Yes. Complexity. You can do. You can do uh, yeah. You can do. Uh, you know. Uh, 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 you can do a variety of, of chips. For example, you can do memory. You can do processors. You can do a variety of things. Because we're using, uh, you know, lithog we use lithography, so it's very similar. So we can go, down, can go down to the same dimension, the same scale, as any chip that you buy today. Same dimension? Yeah, scale. So, so, so if the, you go the, down to not 5, 7 nanometer, you can do it also? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, if, if we have access to the same lithography, yes. How do you get access to that kind of lithography? Uh, What's the trick? We work with customers. So, so we build the tool with everything except lithography. They use their own existing lithography tool. And you just put them in your machine? And, uh, so, so how do you define this? How do you define the, what's special about this technology? What's compared special? To yeah, what's, what's special is one machine can replace a whole fab. That's what's special. And so your cost will go down by 100, but also you can use any material you want. So if you go to a silicon, for example, you cannot mix, you cannot mix a different semiconductor like GAN with silicon. So there, there are two different fabs. You cannot use graphene, you cannot use nanotube using the same fab, for example. You cannot use quantum dots using the same fab. With this technology, with this same machine, you can use any nanomaterial you want, okay? Which is impossible for big fabs. So not only we can, duplicate what fabs can do, but it can also allow you to use whatever material you want to design for your circuit. Any nanomaterial you yes. want? Yes, organic uh, or inorganic. So what are the nanomaterials that chip designers have always dreamed of using but haven't been able to? Well, there, there is all kind of metal, for example, that you can use. Uh, let me give you an example. So, so the, the industry switch from tungsten, I, I worked in the semiconductor industry for 25 years with all the standard processes, so I know. So, so in, the, in the 90s, early 90s, the industry switched from tungsten to copper to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to have better conductivity and to eliminate the electro migration. It took more than 10 years to do that switch, okay? Here, you can have five different metals, okay? In the same machine, for example. Five different? Five different metals, conductors, you know? And you can use all of them without actually making any any changes, except optimizing the process. So, so it's very very important. It gives the it gives the designer, the uh, the uh, the circuit designer, complete freedom to use whatever material they want, instead of actually only being limited to whatever materials the fabs use today. What is on this one? This is conductive uh, polymer. This is polyperole, conductive polymer. Is this all um, working? Is Organic. it possible to connect on, you know, oh, yes. the you rest do, of the system? Do, yes. Is it working? So, so this, is, this is the same pattern using silver, for example. Okay? And so, and so not only we can print these layers, but we can interconnect these layers. So, for example, a circuit layer would take about four to five lay, uh, layers of metal, metal uh, semiconductor and conductor. Then you put a, an insulator, then you interconnect to the second layer of circuit. So we can do, we can print all of that stuff. But all the different layers are difficult, it's difficult to align them. No, we, uh, the, uh, the machine has an aligner built in. But um, is this just prototypes and for now? How, huh? how do you connect this to the complete system? What do you mean, can be system? Uh, let's say when you, you put a chipset on a PCB, for example, do you, does yeah. this work the same way? Yeah, yeah, so, so no, so, so, so wafers actually have, you make the wafers with chips, 
then you cut the chips, silicon, let's say, pieces, yeah. or, or if you use gallium nitride, you use other substrate, you cut them, and then you package them in a chip, and you put epoxy on them, and you put the pins, for example, or the bumps, and then you do that. So here we make the chips, the packaging and the board, and attaching the packaged chips to the board, that's done using uh, 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 commission technology. We can do that also. We can actually do the packaging, we can do the connection, but it's not, it, it's not a high value uh, you know, application at this point. We can get into it later on. Uh, but, but this can also do packaging as well. Because we can do very high aspect ratio interconnect using a variety of conductors. Do you have packaging samples? Did you no, show no, the whole we have system? not done. We have How not far done are you in this? No, we have not done, done packaging. We we're not focused on packaging. We're focused but, on the chips. But do you have your chips in packaging by others or not yet? No, not yet. No, not yet. So, so how so, far could that so, be? So uh, not too far because we're so. So let me explain. We do manufacturing. We don't design circuits. We don't design chips. We depend on the customer. So we we take the customer design and their specification and their material and we print it for them. And, and what we provide, we don't actually manufacture the chips at this point, we sell the equipment. You we do what? Sell the equipment. Sell the equipment. Yeah. So, so the customer will actually make their own chips. But in the process of doing this, we have to do qualifications. So we have to print devices for them and give it to them so they can do complete characterization and uh, qualification. So we do that. But it's not yet, right? No, no, we do that right now. It's, are you already selling the equipment right now? Well, we, we negotiated because we just finished the qualification. So we have to print a variety of materials or a variety of devices. So we already concluded that with a big company, with a $35 billion company, U.S. electronics company. So we already finished that stage. Now we're working on the equipment that will go into their fabs. And that means we have to meet with all the engineers, make sure we meet all the equipment requirement to go in their fab. So we're in that process right now. We so, are negotiating a, we are in the process of selling equipment to universities, but that's for the plastic, not the silicon based. Uh, so, so what's the, what's the reliability and the durability compared to conventional chips? So it should be very similar because we, we, we characterize the printed uh, structure, for example, like conductors and semiconductors. Uh, it has similar properties to structures made using conventional fabrication, such as CBD, electroplating, sputtering, and so forth. So that we can match the physical and uh, electrical properties. So is this revolutionary? Yes. It will change And everything. nobody else is doing something similar? No. We have 35 patents to protect this technology. So, so imagine, so, so let me give an example. I used to be in the semiconductor industry for a long time. In, in, uh, in 2001, there were about 28 leading edge fabrication companies that built fabrication, uh, fabrication facilities. 2018, there was only five left. You know why? Because each fabrication facility costs 20 billion and it costs 1 billion to operate. So, so advanced micro devices is out. They don't do manufacturing anymore. IBM is out of manufacturing. They don't do manufacturing anymore. Why? Global Foundries has issues. Or Global Foundry is the old AMD manufacturing arm. Yeah. And now Global Foundry bought all manufacturing from IBM also. So, so you only have five companies that do manufacturing now. A Global Foundry, TSMC, these are contract manufacturing. Then you have Intel, Samsung, and Micron. That's it. Nobody that's else it. does. That's it. For silicon, that's it. Okay. It's Leading so edge. Not 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 all. Not all technology, not micro scale or sub micro. And are you going to be involved in the leading edge? Yes, that's that's the purpose. Do you make it possible for the, this industry Small to really companies, change in a big way? Yes, I mean the equipment industry will actually come alive, and also all the companies that thought manufacturing is too expensive, now they will change their mind. Because you print. Yes. You print, print. CPUs. That's right. We print. No CBD. No vacuum. No high temperature. And it works. Yes. How do you, how do you how do you verify that it's we, working? We let the customer verify. They already verifying this. Yes. yes. And um, this is it flexible. You mean the substrate? Yeah. Oh. Can it make can it make uh, can it lead to flexible chips? This is flexible. We can make it much more flexible. We can make it. We can make it so the actually here, you can put it around one finger. 
this is 20 micron thick, the thickness. This is much thicker, but it's flexible also. This, the, how about the heat? Uh, well, if you have plastic, you cannot have heat, but on silicon, you can have much, much hot, yeah. You can have as, uh, as, as hot as <coughs> well, conventional chips or not really? Uh, not you can go hotter. Hot. Well, it depends on the chip, because if you're doing regular silicon, uh, it would work up to maybe close to 80 degrees or so, but if you have power electronics, you can go up to 200 degrees. So it depends on which, which chip you're actually talking about. And, and we, we match both, uh, we match the current operating conditions for the chips that you buy today. Uh, so on plastic, you can just do basic computation because you can't get too hot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, you can do regular, uh, I mean, with plastic, you can go up to uh, more than 100 degrees anyway, C. More than 200 so you Fahrenheit. you can do a lot. You yeah, can, you can do you a can lot. Run yeah. Depending on the plastic you buy. So you can do Captain. Anthony, how much Captain? Uh, Jimmy, Captain, how much, how high temperature can you go with Captain? Two hundred C. So you can do flexible. Captain is very flexible. So you can do microcontrollers on plastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah. How far is this in the future from really being changing the whole world? Yeah, I mean, once we put our machines in a regular, in a real fab, which we we expect to happen within less than one year, then everything will change. This is this is a fab. This is a thirty-five billion dollar company that that will will uh, will use this. So so we have we are. I mean I think this is a huge paradigm shift for uh, electronics uh, fabrication and manufacturing. But it's printing now.